So what I'm gonna cover today is why do people bid on their competitors' names, how they bid on competitors' names, why it doesn't work, and then I'm gonna give you some situations of how it does work. Bidding on Google Ads, your competitor names, it's a tactic that's been used for a really, really long time. I mean, I'm talking like 14, 15 years, maybe even longer. And it's a tactic that, yeah, it's had success, but really it's a tactic that comes out of ego for most of our clients and what we see in brands. It's basically, hey, I've been competing with that guy for 10 years, he's bidding on my name, so I'm gonna bid on his name. You know, I had a plumber in my office, this was probably in 2013, and uh, we were going through his uh, search terms report and he noticed that uh, one of his competitors was bidding on his name. So he pulled up on the phone and said, you know what, I'm calling him. Talk to him about why are you bidding on my name? And of course, the other guy said he had no idea he was bidding on their name. So this is something that has created a bunch of friction. And I just wanna add some clarity into bidding on competitor names. We'll go into why we don't recommend it unless it's under certain circumstances and we'll talk about that as well. You wanna know if your competitor is doing really, really well, you're gonna go ahead and bid on their name. You think you're gonna get a lower cost per click. Let's say an AC repair cost per click in your market is somewhere like 35 to $45. Well, bidding on Joe's AC repair, you're thinking maybe you can get a lower cost per click of $6 or something along those lines. Conversion tracking wasn't great, so an agency would rely on this tactic just to show a lower cost per click but without call recording and FSM revenue reporting, uh, you don't really know how this is working out in the call center. So let's talk about how businesses bid on their competitor names. First and foremost, Google ads, uh, Bing ads. It's a pretty easy tactic. Go ahead and find your primary competitors and build out an ad group that's listed by competitor or just a campaign that has an ad group called competitors and you throw your competitor names in there. What we would typically recommend is whatever competitor keywords you're going after, I would want to also make sure those are negative keywords in any of your other tactics. We want to make sure when we onboard a client that we find all their competitor names in their geo and we add those as negative keywords because most of our clients, we do not recommend this as a tactic because it's a lot of wasted spend. So one of the ways we can really optimize a client's spend up front is by getting a list of all their competitor names adding them as negatives in your service terms and in your branded just to make sure that you're not paying for a follow-up on a service call from your competitor. Your CSRs do not want to be handling someone calling Joe's Plumbing or Joe's HVAC, your competitor, and saying, hey, I had a tech out here, he did a great job, uh, I need to pay my invoice. That is a wasted opportunity, that is wasted spend. In your Google Ads campaigns, bidding on these search terms, you know, you could do an exact match keyword, you could do phrase match, but basically, you're driving this traffic into your website. Most people make the mistake of, all right, I'm gonna bid on my competitor's names, and I'm gonna send it to the homepage. If you're gonna do this tactic, send it to a page that talks about your competitors. Don't send it to a, the homepage or a service page. You wanna make sure that this is traffic you can convert on. Why doesn't this tactic work? I have a ton of reasons why bidding on your competitor names doesn't work. First, a lot of companies think of this as a barnacle concept. So in SEO, there was this thing called barnacle SEO where uh, if you're a smaller brand, a barnacle, you can hop onto a whale, just like a barnacle travels in the ocean. For example, the BBB, Yelp, Home Advisor, a lot of these big platforms, those would be a whale and you with your local website need to be optimized on those sites. In the same way here from a bidding strategy, you're looking at, I've got my Google ads and maybe you're a $2 million shop. Well, I wanna bid on the $15 million shop's name because they're spending money on TV, they're spending money on radio, everybody knows who they are. I wanna spend money on them. There are some key reasons why that doesn't work. If you're bidding on a whale's brand name, they typically have things out there from an offer standpoint, they've got uh, brand recognition, their quality scores going back to their homepage and Google ads are gonna be a lot higher, which means they're paying a lot less for that click than you are. Secondly, if that's a name that's known in the community and somebody clicks on you, there's a lot more potential friction for them contacting a two to $3 million shop when they think they're calling one of the whales in the local area. They see them all over TV, see them all over radio, they're looking for Big Joe's plumbing and then they get you it's a little bit more friction for your CSR to overcome in that early stages. Another reason we see it not working is just overall optimization of your account. What we look at is quality scores. If you're bidding on Big Joe's Plumbing and Google goes back to the landing page and Big Joe's Plumbing is not a keyword, is not an exact match used on the content, it's not in the domain, Google's already gonna get your quality score a lot lower. The higher the quality score, one to 10, the lower the cost per click, the lower the quality score, typically the higher the cost per click. It's kind of the same thing of if you're bidding on AC repair, but you send it to a landing page that talks about Reebok shoes, that doesn't make sense. These two things don't add up. So when it comes to quality score, you're gonna be paying more to get your competitor's clicks 
then that competitor will be paying. Another reason why it's not as efficient bidding on your competitor's name is the click-through rate. If you're bidding on Big Joe's Plumbing, but you're Al's Plumbing, and the message in your ad says Al's Plumbing, Big Joe's Plumbing is gonna get a higher click-through rate. So already, again, uphill battle, you're gonna be paying a little bit more, but also your click-through rate's gonna be lower, and that can impact the campaign that it's a part of. So one of the biggest ways that I see waste happen in a Google Ads campaign bidding on your competitors is your CSRs are not in tune with what you're doing on the marketing side. What we typically hear when we do call grading is somebody looking to do business with Joe's Plumbing, and you commonly will hear the CSR say, oh, yeah, we're not Joe's Plumbing. I'm so sorry, do you want me to get their phone number for you? Oh, here it is. One, we know that you paid for that call. Two, you're wasting valuable time having your CSR promote another company. And three, you got a phone call from a prospect, somebody you wanna do business with, and I bet they didn't get their info and put it into your FSM. And last, another reason why it just doesn't work for most brands is it opens you up to waste, a ton of waste. So you may be bidding on Joe's Plumbing. Well, what about? Small Joe's Plumbing, what about West Side Joe's Plumbing, East Side Joe's Plumbing, or what about just West Side Plumbing? When you open yourself up to competitor brand names, Google loves to translate what you think you're bidding on and turn it into something else. We want to limit the amount of opportunities for Google to just guess. From our perspective as an advertiser, they're getting worse and worse at guessing for keywords that you really don't want. And so we want to eliminate that waste from Google. We don't want the guesswork to be there and waste your budgets because typically you're going to be paying a premium for your competitor's brand name. Your call center isn't ready and coached on how to flip that lead. It's someone that is likely already doing business with your competitors and your quality score isn't really there. So all of the above, if you're not trained up and if you don't have a specific tactic for this, we just don't recommend you dancing here your budget can be spent on brand awareness tactics or service-based tactics. So now that I've told you why you should not bid on your competitors' brand names, let me give you a couple reasons why you should or could. Number one, do you have a local competitor that just went out of business? Awesome. If they went out of business, go find their tracking numbers, try to buy their domain, but first and foremost, start bidding on their name because their Google ads likely aren't running and you can give your CSR as a pitch and say, hey, we're going after Joe's Plumbing keywords in our marketing strategy for this 30-day sprint. With, when you get a call from Joe's Plumbing or somebody looking for Joe's Plumbing, here is how you flip it. I'm gonna give you a little bonus when you do. So every call you flip when they come in for Joe's Plumbing and we got a call recording on it, we're gonna give you an extra 10 bucks or after extra 15 bucks. So that is one way when they go out of business that you can bid on their name. Another one, do you have a competitor that just got in trouble locally? Did they uh, get found price gouging? Did they have really high pricing? It's starting to become a little bit of friction. Maybe they got consolidated and now they've got a little bit more of a bad reputation. That's something that could also be used as an opportunity. We had someone in my local area here, uh, a business owner, this was probably about eight, nine years ago, get arrested. They weren't able to do business for a while, um, so we used the tactic to really go after their name. But the key difference is we coach the call center on when you get these calls, this is what they're doing. All right, another tactic. Your guys will tell you, I love running up against this company or that company. Cool. If you actually have the hard data that your guys are running circles around one of your main competitors and they do have brand authority in the space, this could be a tactical campaign. What you want to do is make sure that you have in the headlines free second opinions. Make sure you get second opinions on all HVAC replacements or whatever you're going after but tactfully go after that and paint the picture of either a better financing offer that they have, a better price point that they have, what's your unique selling position that makes you better than the other guy, put that in the headline, and then you can bid on the competitor name. And then I'm, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, make sure your call center knows about it. Make sure they know about your unique positions in contrast to who they are. You gotta coach the team, make sure they're expecting these types of calls. Lastly, Another way it may make sense for you to bid on a competitor name is when you have a similar name as them. Look, I know there are a lot of cool, unique brand names out there right now. Uh, branding has been a really big push over the last 10 years, so we have some well, well-branded companies uh, in the home services markets, but there are quite a few that still sound the same. One spelling off or one letter off, a different sounding name. You may need to bid on your competitor names if you have a very similar name in your market. Just to recap, we do not recommend bidding on your competitor names unless you have a really sophisticated call center, if you're getting leads uh, that you need and you're not in a moment of desperation, and if you're tracking it properly in your FSM. Aside from that, let's focus on building your own brand. Don't worry about what your competitors are doing. We want to encourage you to build your team, build your brand and your awareness in your space. Have a good day, y'all.